sure you all remember the video I did a few weeks ago when Shenzhen was on lockdown for seven days. Well, we locked down when there were only a few dozen cases and it worked. The lockdown was lifted and now we only have one or two cases a day. We wear masks and get PCR tested, but otherwise pretty normal. So for those of you that have been worried about me, thank you, I'm okay. Things are fine here. Shanghai though, they waited. And without going into too much detail, I'm sure you've seen on news, things got really bad. Now I have a lot of friends up in Shanghai and something like that happens to people you know, obviously you're going to take precautions, try and make sure it doesn't happen to you, which I've been doing. I think I've been talking to you about prepping for almost two years now. Sensible, moderate stuff. No tinfoil hats, you know, those kind of preppers. But as competently as I think my city has handled things, I'm sure you understand that after seeing what happened in Shanghai, I'm stocking up and planning carefully. Some of those precautions are a little different than you might see elsewhere. I'm not on a farm or in any kind of a rural environment. This is strictly urban prep. Realistically, we're not looking at the collapse of civilization, but at worst, a few months of serious supply chain issues. And that's been a global thing. I think we've all been experiencing a little of that. So far, there's in love of everything, but not when and where people need it, either in trucks sitting on highways or on ships that haven't been unloaded. It's almost all basically supply chain problems related to just-in-time inventory management, which these days isn't looking like it was the best invention ever. So I'm not buying chickens and going all off grid or anything, just the usual rational assessment of a threat model and talking about reasonable and scientific precautions to address that. Then, just like we always do, walk through the problem, define its parameters, and I'll show a few interesting solutions I've come across and you can see what you think. Please kindly keep the politics out of my replies. There is nothing I can do about this. And we have good common ground in a desire to be prepared. So let's all focus on that. One major concern these days is power. While Shanghai saw no major power interruptions, other public services have issues because it was hard for repair workers to get where they needed to be under lockdown. And in general, brownouts and rolling blackouts are becoming more common around the world. So realistically, I need to be able to handle a day without power. Because I read, I can't really make a lot of changes like adding solar panels to the roof or anything. Whatever I do, I have to be able to take with me, or it has to pay for itself in two or three years. So in addition to small battery power lights, what I use is portable power stations. One to run my computer and a fan for Momo and I, and another one to run my security cameras and MVR. But I've needed another one to power my freezer, so all this food I've been stockpiling doesn't go bad. Now, what I have here is a new portable power station that I've had my eye on, the Tech Horse S4200. I requested it as a review unit because I like the specs over other similar units, but I'm too cheap to buy one. As always, I'm free to trash it if I don't like it. I'm never obligated to give a good review and no company is allowed any inference over any review I give. This means no one wants to send me anything but at least I earn an honest living. So let's take a look and I'll tell you what I think. This is the new freezer I bought. 
I keep most of my meat in here. And if that goes bad, it's a waste and it's expensive. Although I cook and dehydrate it before I let that happen. One of the things I do to prepare for a power outage is maximize thermal mass. The more stuff that's frozen inside, the more heat can be absorbed before things start to defrost. So I usually keep a few of these buckets filled with water inside. That big block of ice will help keep things cool in the event of power failure. And I just take them out as the freezer fills up. So let's hook it up and see how the Ted horse handles it. Okay, while we let that run, let me show you what else I've been up to. There's a few ways of storing dry goods. Bags, a vacuum sealer, and oxygen absorbers is one. Voila! And this pepper is great, and food package this way lasts much longer. But it's a little time consuming, and I don't really need to keep rice for 5 or 10 years. 2 or 3 years is fine, and then I can use it up and rotate more rice in. Fortunately, living in a manufacturing-oriented city, compressed gas is cheap. So I've been using nitrogen to preserve some things. Watch. Oxygen is one of the things that made our food go bad, and it's also what a lot of the bad stuff that can grow in our food needs. Fortunately, nitrogen is heavier than oxygen, so it will sink to the bottom and it displace it. What I like to do is give it plenty of time to penetrate and push any pockets of oxygen to the surface, and so I keep the flow very, very low. This candle on top is going to tell us when the nitrogen has reached the top of the bucket. Alright, now I'm going to put two bags of the oxygen absorber on top of the lid. And then put the lid on. Okay, some dry emergency dog food for more water. Okay, now I've got rice and she's got dog food. Now these are screw on lids. The pop of kind that you see with a hammer are better, but it turns out I'm not strong enough to easily get them open. Even with the little pry tool you can buy. If I was sick, incapacitated, have a broken arm or something like that, I'd have quite a problem getting to my food. If you have kids, keep that in mind. They'll need food they can get to if something happens to you. 
Remember, with some of these variants, you can be out of commission and bedridden for days or weeks. Make sure you plan for that. Since I am aiming for less than three years, a screw top should be fine. I'll check in a year, but I'd suggest you use the other kind bucket just to be sure. One of the things that has played a very important role in Shanghai is butter. If you live in a city, it's very unlikely that you'll have room to store everything. And trying to have one of everything you might possibly need is impractical anyway. So what's been happening is people have set up a lively barter system within their buildings. It's been very community oriented with a focus on making sure everyone gets what they need. A few people have even used drones to send things back and forth. Some people have extra rice, some have canned goods, some have beer. Since you can't store everything, it's a good idea to store some things that maybe you don't need, but will be good for barter. In order to do that, it turns out it needs to be in its original packaging or people don't trust the trade. So I'm going to take these lentils and seal them up in a bucket just like they are. also have a few boxes of cigarettes that will preserve perfectly this way. I don't smoke of course, but they will be great for butter if I ever need them. One other thing that might interest you, these are compressed biscuits, otherwise known b by biscuits. You can buy them at your local Asian market, I'll put some links in the description. Each is about 400 calories, so 5 or so a day will keep you alive. They've got a five-year shelf life and are actually pretty tasty. You can also drop them in water to make a sort of porridge. Let's hook this 500 watt hot plate up to the tech hose and make some hot water for porridge. So it has a little rub in there. It's pretty good. Oh, it's a little soupy. I added too much water, but let's have a try. Still tastes okay. Mm. Good. I highly recommend keeping a box of these on a shelf somewhere. Again, these will keep you going if you are too incapacitated to cook for some reason. They're cheap, tasty, can be butter, and honestly, you'll probably use them up before they expire. Just having one occasionally as a snack or popping a few in your luggage in case you get stuck waiting on the runway or something. Okay, so my food is in good shape, but what about water? Well, in Shenzhen, the water is clean enough for bathing and doing the dishes, but you don't really want to drink it or cope with it. In an emergency, you could boil it. There are heavy metals, but not enough to do harm in a few weeks or months but most of us get it delivered in big bottles or use a water filter. This is my reverse osmosis filter. It's made by Xiaomi. It uses electricity, but I can hook it up to the tech hose and store some extra water just in case. So I've tested the tech hose with my freezer 
and it will go a bit over 12 hours. If I don't open the top, call it another 12 hours before I have to start cooking stuff to keep it from going bad. A full day without power is not something that I've ever experienced in Shenzhen. So I'm happy that with the grid of preparation. Now the tech horse does have a solar panel, but you are basically going to be trickle charging it. You can run heavy appliances of a panel this size, but if the power doesn't come back on, it will give you the basics. Lights, smartphones, fan. But you'd best start cooking and preserving that stuff in the freezer. The tech host is buffer, a battery, not a power source. I don't think personal power generation in an urban setting is very realistic, so I'm not trying to do that. We just need to buy ourselves some time, maybe a half a day or a day, because it's a statistical fact that power outages are becoming more common. When that happens, this lets us live our lives with less interruption. And as always, the rule of seven piece applies. Proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. Okay, so that's how I'm going to be using this portable power station. Maybe that will give you some ideas of how you can use it. If you are in a rural area or the suburbs, obviously a gas generator is something to consider. In an urban environment, an apartment building or office, you are going to want something like this. Pros and cons. Cons. Not with this unit specifically, but I like my prep and my press suggestions to be cheap or free. If it's gear, I want it to be something I'll use to barbecue or picnic anyway. If it's food, I want it to be food I eat anyway and can store in rotation. The best prep should not cost you anything but shelf space and time. But a portable power station is an actual upfront expense you won't get any use out of until there is an emergency. Now, I really don't like that. I'm pretty cheap, but I see the wisdom in it. I can tell you what to do because I got this as a real unit. But I have to say, if I have not, I'd probably save and buy this or something very similar because I really do feel temporary power loss is a significant potential issue for the next decade or so. Here in China and elsewhere as we transition to greener energy, but also due to aging infrastructure in many places that has not been upgraded to support larger populations. Now, as far as the unit itself, I'd prefer more than two power output jacks. But since I'm connecting extension cords anyway, that's a minor issue. It's very heavy. Given its power rating, there's no way around that. I'm certainly not bringing up any stairs, but you might be able to. And last is on Indiegogo. We all know the potential issues, so I won't go over them again. I don't reveal crowdfunded projects that I think won't deliver, but as always, you have to make that decision on your own. They are estimating an August ship date. I think that's realistic and workable. All the factories down here are fully open and all that. Pros. At 4,200 watt hours, it has huge capacity. Very few portable power stations on the market with this kind of rating. This is basically the limit of what I would recommend for a portable unit. Anything larger and moving it around is an issue. Larger than this, you should make the jump to server rack style batteries, which is a whole other topic. But the tech host covers most of what you might need for 24 hours. No, not all lights blazing, but you can live and work basically without interruption. Next, the tech horse uses a lithium iron phosphate battery. This is definitely the type you want. Lithium iron phosphate is unsuitable for wearable devices like watches because it has a lower energy density compared to other lithium ion batteries. We 
aren't carrying this around, so we don't care if it's a little heavier. Why? Because for applications like this, lithium iron phosphate is far superior. For one, because the cycle life of a lithium iron phosphate battery is over four times that of other lithium ion batteries, around 3,000 to 5,000 cycles. So the battery lasts four times as long, which makes the cost much lower in the long run. You can expect about a decade out of this. They can be fully discharged without damaging the battery and are also the safest lithium battery type on the market, much safer than lithium ion. I like that its enclosure is mostly metal, which given its way I prefer, if it falls over, it won't crack any plastic or something. The large wheels and the handle are a big part of why I wanted a tech horse. I can live it and will not try, but it's easy for me to maneuver around if I have to move it outside to charge or anything like that. The displays are clear and easy to read. It's got those buttons on the front if you want, but you can basically just ignore all that. Turn it on and plug it in. It's simple and it works. Most importantly, it does work as an uninterruptible power supply. You can leave it plugged in and it will automatically switch over to battery backup in the event of power failure. You want to do this for your computers, your freezer, that kind of thing, in case you are out of the house. It's a critical feature. The response time is 10 milliseconds. Overall, I really like it. I'm happy to have it, and if it's in your budget, it could easily pay for itself the first time you have a blackout and can keep working and don't lose lots of food. I'm not involved with the Indiegogo campaign, so can't make any promises, but I see no red flags that give me cause for concern. That's it for today. Do you both like this kind of video? I know I jump around topics a lot, and some of these videos are a little chatty as I talk through a problem. Is that okay? No? What would you like to see more of? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it!